For nearly 45 years, this vast expanse of ice lay untouched. As of 1912, only two parties in history had ever set foot at the South Pole. Roll Amundsen of Norway, followed by Great Britain's Robert Falcon Scott. Scott's party died during their trek back on foot across this harsh continent. Then in November of 1929, Richard E. Byrd became the first to fly over the South Pole, never landing, and returned safely to Little America. But on October 31, 1956, seven U.S. naval aviators did what many thought was impossible. They landed a plane for the first time at the bottom of the world. The pilot, Lieutenant Commander Conrad C. Gus Shin, landed the twin-engine R4-D5 Skytrain, nicknamed k Sera Sera, at 8.34 p.m. local time, skidding to a stop at 90 degrees south latitude. With engines running to avoid freeze-up, U.S. Navy Admiral George J. Duffick, commander of Operation Deep Freeze, quickly stepped out onto the frozen terrain and planted the stars and stripes at the South Pole. After 49 minutes on the ice, the crew left Pole and returned to what is now the National Science Foundation's McMurdo Station. The flight not only proved that a remote station could be supported by air, but opened up the continent to scientific discovery. Many more flights would follow, bringing construction materials and cargo needed to build the first of three research stations that would be built on the continent over the years. The flights also brought in scientists eager to tackle this vast unknown. Fast forward 60 years. Today, the National Science Foundation's South Pole Station is host to cutting-edge world-class science. Planes routinely fly to and from the bottom of the world, carrying researchers, instruments, and other cargo. Here, scientists study the Earth's atmosphere, the origins of the universe, and even the elusive subatomic particles called neutrinos, none of which would have been possible had it not been for Gashin and his team and that historic first landing.